Hey you guys, this is Mr. Sal. We're going to go ahead and solve for P in this problem. Uh, we have P's on both sides and it looks like we're going to need to use some distribution. So on this first part I'm just going to distribute the negative 10. So I have to take that negative 10 and multiply it by the 3P and the 2 as well. Then I'll subtract the 7. This all equals, I must distribute the 6 as well on the right side of the equal sign. And I would have 6 times 3p minus 6 times 5. So let's go ahead and multiply those together. And we have negative 30p minus 20 minus 7 equals 6 times 3p is 18p minus 6 times 5 is 30 there. Now that we have this, we'll combine like terms on each side of the equal sign. On the right side, we don't have any like terms, so we're just going to leave that the way it is. But on the left side, we have two of these terms that do not have p's. So we'll combine these two to give us a negative 27. And that's negative 30p minus 27 equals 18p minus 30. And at this point, we need to put all of the p's on one side of the equal sign. It doesn't matter which side we choose as long as we choose a side and stick with it. The other side will take on all of the constants or just the numbers without p's. Another way to look at this is to use the switch and stay game, and on my channel you can find a video that will help you to do that. Well, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and go through this using principles of equality, because most people prefer it. And I'm going to put the p's on the right side of the equal sign, and the numbers on the left. So, when I do this problem, I can see right away that I've got p's on the left side and I've got to get rid of those by adding them since that's a negative 30p that will make it a zero but if I do it to one side of the line I must also do it to the other side of the line so I have 18p plus 30p that gives me a 48p now what we'll do is we have that minus 30 and it is also on the wrong side of the equal sign because the P's should be on the right. So we've got to get rid of that one as well by adding 30 to both sides like this. Now what we need to do is get rid of that 48 P's by dividing that by 48. Uh, what this does is it gives us a coefficient of P that is 1. But if I do it to one side I must also do it to the other side as well. What this does is it gives me a single value, p, and it would be 3 divided by 48, which I can simplify since both of these are divisible by 3. So I would divide the 3 by 3, which is 1, and 48 divided by 3 is 16. Now that may not be as obvious to some of you, so you may prefer to write this in fractional form, so we have... 3 and decimal form, I apologize. 3 divided by 48. 48 doesn't go into 3. It doesn't go into 30 either, but it will go into 300. Now, since I'm dealing with some pretty big numbers, I went ahead and made a list of multiples of 48. 48, 2 48s, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. If I need the ninth one, I'll use it, but I'm not sure if we're going to need to. So let's go ahead and see how this works. I can see that 48 will go into 300, but how many times? Well, it'll go into it this many times, which is my sixth multiple of 48. In other words, 6 times 48 gives me that 288, which is in my list. And when I subtract it, I get a 12. So I'm going to need another 0, which I'll drop into this. So that's a 120, right? Well, 120... It won't go into it three times, but it will go into this the second time. So that's 2. 2 times 48 is that 96. We'll subtract, and we would get 24. So 24, it won't go into 24 evenly, so we'll have to drop another 0. We have an exact 240 right here, which is the fifth term. So... 5 times 48 is another 240, and that gives us a 0 there at the bottom. 
So if we wanted to, we could just say that P equals that decimal 0 0.0625. Either one will work, either the fraction or the decimal.